Greetings, Terrarians Chaos here. It's been a hot minute since I've had a build tutorial on my channel, and based on feedback from you guys, it seems that we are overdue for one. So today, I'm going to be going over the basics of paint in Terraria, and I'll give you some unique uses and techniques for them to help you improve your own builds. I do already have a paint tutorial out on the channel that came out nearly two years ago, and I will cover some of the points of that video today, but today's video is going to be focused more on the basics than the previous one did, and it will be updated to version 1.4.2. So if you'd like to check out the older video, I will leave a link to that in the description below. So paint in Terraria is purchased by the painter NPC who moves into your world after you have eight or more town NPCs living in it. Paint can be applied to any placeable object in Terraria. Furniture, blocks, walls, and decoration items can all be painted, including naturally generated ones. Using a paintbrush or a paint roller, you can place paint manually or by using a paint sprayer or architect gizmo pack, you can paint objects automatically when you place them. Just make sure that you have the paint sprayer turned on. Using a paint scraper, you can remove paint from an object, returning it to its default original color, though admittedly, I end up usually just breaking an object to get rid of the paint. Find that a little bit quicker and easier. A look at the Painter NPC's inventory shows us a wide selection of paints, but actually this isn't even half of what's available in game. These are the normal paints. Brown, white, gray, and black paints all work as you would expect them to. They change the tint of an object or a wall to whatever color you're using at the time. I highly recommend experimenting around with brown and gray paints in particular, as you can find new building alternatives you hadn't previously thought of. For example, by using brown paint, nearly every wood type takes on a similar color and texture and they end up matching each other much better than they would naturally. And by painting things gray, you can come up with unique stone or metallic textures. So experiment around and see what you come up with. The other colors available by default, however, may not be as potent as you would expect them to be. These normal paints work in two different ways. For some blocks and furnitures, they add a tint of color to the object. Some objects take on paint better than others, and in some cases, it may not even be noticeable at all. This can be handy in some cases like glass, where you want to add a subtle splash of color without detracting too much from a build. Kind of like what I did with the glass bottles in Hai's Potion Shop over on the TerraCore server. Then there are some blocks, furniture pieces, and decoration items that function uniquely with these normal paints. Only a section of the object will be painted with the color, while the rest remains unpainted visually. The best examples of this are grass and trees. When you use these colors, they will change the color of the grass and the leaves, but not the color of the dirt or the bark. Simply using some yellows, oranges, and reds, you can change the trees and grass to give them an autumn feel to a landscape. And interestingly enough, if you paint grass and it spreads to a nearby dirt block, the new grass will be already painted. Any tall grass that grows on top of it will also take on that paint, and if you plant an acorn on top of painted grass, when it grows, it will take on the color of the grass below it. If you are building custom trees, painting living leaves and mahogany leaves the same color will help you use both of these together in the same tree for added texture without the colors varying too much. They work equally well when you paint them green or lime. You'll have to experiment around with different objects to see what can be lightly painted and what can't. And just a small tip, if you use orange paint instead of brown paint on various types of wood, it looks more faded, but still wooden, as if it's been sitting exposed to the elements for years. This can be a great technique for ruins or older looking builds. Now, if you wanted something to be painted more thoroughly with these colors, there's another option called deep paint. 
You craft it at a die vat, which is purchased from the die trader NPC. Simply have two or more of any normal paint color, not including brown, white, gray, or black, in your inventory, and you will see a deep variant in your crafting list. It will paint the entirety of an object, however, so it can't be used to paint sections of objects like normal paint can. It will cover everything. This is great for things that normally don't take paint well, like statues, clouds, or sails, but it can be overwhelming on other types of objects, so it'll take some trial and error to figure out when you want to use normal paint or when you want to use deep paint. I would definitely not recommend this for grass and trees, however, as it will paint the dirt and the wood, and it's just not a very good look. There are also three types of specialty paints in Terraria. All of these have unique functions that don't work like any of the other paints in the game. If you move the Painter NPC into a graveyard biome, you will see a new paint option available to you called Illuminate Paint. This is a very interesting item. When you use it on something, the object will not change color in any way. Instead, it will prevent shadows from developing on anything that has been painted with the Illuminant paint. You won't notice a difference on an object that's been painted in sunlight, but as soon as it gets dark, you will see what I mean. It almost feels as if this object is glowing, but it actually isn't. No light is being produced from this paint. It will not light up anything nearby. It just prevents the object from getting any darker. Now, this is a very niche paint, as it won't be useful in most builds, but it does have some really incredible applications in fine details. For example, if you have a window in your house and you paint a line beneath the window with a luminate paint, it could look like a beam of moonlight is pouring into the house at night. Be sure to paint the glass as well, even if it's behind the great blocks, as it really leans into that moonlight feeling. And if you throw in a couple of diamond gem spark walls behind the floor below the window, the scene just comes alive as it slightly lights up the room. You can also use Illuminate Paint on some light emitting objects to make them appear even brighter. For example, if you use Illuminate Paint on Living Fire, it takes on a more natural looking fire color. It's also extremely handy for when you need anything to pop out in the darkness or night, like this Echo Block, which is normally much more dim in darkness. The other two types of specialty paints become available for sale from the painter when you've entered hard mode. After defeating the Wall of Flesh, you'll notice shadow paint and negative paint in the painter's inventory. Shadow paint is pretty straightforward. It functions like the deep version to black paint. Anything that you use shadow paint on will get much darker than it normally does with black paint. It won't be perfectly black, but it's as close as you can get in Terraria. This is amazingly useful for hiding objects in shadows. You can make background doors using actuated teleporters, or you can even hide monster spawners in a crack in the wall or more. It's very handy when you need to tuck something away into a dark area. Using shadow, black, gray, and white paint, you can even make a stairwell that leads into the shadows that is a fully functional door with a teleporter at the bottom. The last type of paint is negative paint. Instead of applying a new color to an object, it inverts it. If you think of a color wheel such as this one, you can get a really good idea of how negative paint will work. Say we're looking at this tree. The leaves on it are green. If we look at the green part of the color wheel and we find the color directly opposite of that, that's exactly what the color of the leaves are going to become when we apply negative paint to them. This is another very niche paint that you're not going to use often, but when used correctly, it can be an amazing detail. Leaf blocks suddenly take on a bright pink look, much like a cherry blossom tree. Using it on smoke blocks makes a white block that is perfect for a waterfall splash effect. You can even use this on ice to make it look like magma, which is crazy because you're going from cold to hot. You can get incredibly creative with this paint, but it does take a lot of trial and error as some things look really bizarre when painted negatively. Now we've covered all of the paints and how they work, but there will be some things in Terraria that will never change with paint. 
Any object that has an effect can be painted, but the effect will not be changed. Pylons are a great example of this. You can paint them, but only the base will change. The crystal itself is an effect and not actually part of the furniture sprite, so it's not going to be painted. The same thing goes for the lizard altar or the lizard furnace or the bright edges of glowing furniture like the monoliths or even some small things like the light sold by Santa. There are a lot of things that will not be changed. Sometimes this is annoying as I would love to be able to paint the crystal on pylons or the lava veins on the underworld potted plants, but other times this is incredibly useful. Taking two of Santa's red lights and putting them in a cave background wall, then painting them with shadow paint can make for a pair of creepy red eyes. Hook those up to a timer with a randomizer and they'll start blinking randomly, which is an amazing detail, so this isn't all bad. Similar to furniture effects, particles emitted from blocks and furniture can typically not be painted. You'll be able to paint the chimney or the bubble machine, but not the smoke or the bubbles that they produce. This is the case for anything that creates particles with one exception, the leaves that fall from trees and leaf blocks. Whenever you paint these, any leaves that fall from them will have the same appearance, ensuring that no matter what, they will match whatever you want your tree to look like. This applies to every single paint except for illuminant paint. For whatever reason, the leaves do not take on the illuminant paint's glow effect and they will remain dark at night. So now you're accustomed with all of the different paints in Terraria and how they work with various blocks and objects. You've filled up your inventory with paint and, well, if you're new to using paint in the game, you may be confused at how it chooses which paint is being used. Well, the rule is pretty straightforward. Paints placed in your ammo slot are always used first from top to bottom. The topmost paint will always be the one that's used until it is gone, then it will pick the next ammo slot down. If you have no paint in your ammo slots, the game will use paint in your inventory, starting from the top row, always using the paint that's on the farthest left, working its way right and then down. So in this configuration, I have white paint in my top ammo slot. Terraria will ignore all other paints in my inventory and use that. If I remove white paint and trash it, that leaves deep red in the next available ammo slot, so that's what will be used instead. If I trash that, then the game will use the negative paint that's sitting on the far left side of my action bar. Once that's gone, it will use the paint that's to the right. And that pattern will continue to repeat from left to right, top to bottom. In order of selection, it will always be the top first and left. So the easiest way of ensuring you know which paint you're going to be using is simply by leaving it in the topmost ammo slot. And that wraps up the basics to painting in Terraria. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe to the channel for more builds, playthroughs, and tutorials. Let me know if you'd like to see more basic tutorials or some more advanced ones. If you think I missed something in the basics to painting, be sure to let me know in the comments. And for now, thank you all very much for watching. Keep an eye out for a brand new TerraCore episode coming out soon. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.